Hello, welcome to lesson 7. In this lesson, we are going to continue looking at the measurement of the focal length of the converging lens or the concave or the convex lens. And then we shall also look at the measurement of the focal length of a diverging lens or the concave lens. Let's begin by looking at the measurement of the focal length of a converging lens. And you are going to look at the displacement method, which is our method 6. In this method we need uh, a screen, we need the converging lens whose focal length we require, and then we shall also need an illuminated object. So this is the illuminated object, this is the screen, and then this is the lens uh, in this position and this position. Let us call this position A and then call this position B. So we shall call this position A. Then we shall call this position B. Uh -huh. So then we are going to place we're going to place the illuminate the illuminated object at a distance, at a certain distance away from I said at a certain distance away from the convex lens at position A, away from the convex lens at this position A. So we shall place the illuminated object at a certain position away from the converging lens at position A. Then after that, we are going to adjust the screen until when a sharp image of the wire goes or of the cross wire is formed on the screen until when a sharp image of the cross wire which is the illuminated object is formed on the screen. Then we shall note the position that means that the distance from uh, the distance from the object up to the screen is going to be noted that distance L is going to be noted and then after noting that position we shall keep the position of the object and the screen fixed and then we shall and then we shall displace this convex lens towards the screen to a point such that a final uh, such that such that an image such that a sharp image of the wire goes or of the cross wire or of, of the illuminated object here is formed on the screen. So we shall adjust the position of the lens until when a sharp image of until when a sharp image of the cross wire is formed on the screen. Then we shall note that position B and measure the distance between A and B and that distance D which is the displacement of the lens is going to be recorded and the displacement D of the lens is going to be recorded. So we shall be having the distance L and the distance D. Then we shall calculate the focal length of that lens using the formula F is equal to L squared minus D squared divided by 4L. That is a formula that we derived earlier on. So that formula is what we shall use to get the focal length of the lens. But for accuracy, we shall repeat the procedure with a different value of L. We shall repeat the procedure with a different value of L and get the corresponding value of D and get that new F and then the focal length is going to be the average of the two Fs. Let's look at method 7 and this is using the lens formula. Uh, in this method we are still going to have a screen and the lens whose focal length we want and then we shall also have an illuminated object. So it is going to be, the setup is going to be like this, the apparatus is going to be arranged in that way. Uh, so we shall have the cross wire illuminated with light from maybe a bulb and this cross wire sometimes called the wire gauze is placed here and then it is illuminated. So this is the object, so the cross wire becomes the object or the wire gauze becomes the object 
and then this is the screen and this is the lens. So what you're going to do is we are going to move the, the lens, you're going to move the lens along OL, sort of along OS until when a sharp image of the wire goes is formed on the screen or a sharp image of the cross wire is formed on the screen. And then after that we shall measure the distance OL. We shall measure the distance OL and we shall measure that distance as U. It's going to be a distance U. So that distance OL is going to be measured and recorded as U. And then after that we shall also measure the distance LS and we shall record it as V. Then after that we are going to repeat the procedure. We are going to repeat the procedure for, so that we get different values of U and V with different values of U so that we are going to repeat the procedure so that we can uh, uh, get different values of U and V. And then also we shall tablate our results, including values of 1 over u and 1 over v. That means that in your table, you will be having a column of u, a column of v, a column of 1 over u, and another column of 1 over v. Another column of 1 over v. Then after that, we shall plot a graph of 1 over u against 1 over v. And that means that 1 over u will be on the y-axis and 1 over v is going to be on the x-axis. Then we shall have a straight line graph and shall have a straight line graph but this time round it will not be like uh, what we had in the previous lesson. This time round it will be quite slanting such that the, the graph will be touching both the axis, the 1 over u axis and the 1 over v axis then we shall get the intercept on the 1 over u axis and the 1 over v axis. So we shall get the, then after that, we shall, after getting the intercept, that intercept on the 1 over u axis, we shall record it as A, and the intercept on the 1 over v axis, we shall record it as B. And then we shall calculate F using the equation F is equal to 2, over a plus b. So we shall use that formula to obtain the focal length of that converging lens. Let's look at measurement of the focal length of a diverging lens. Method one, that is using a converging lens. So when you're using a converging lens, here first of all, we are going to place an object in front of the converging lens and then it will form an image at the position I1. So this is how it will be. Before we place the diverging lens, before we place the diverging lens, we shall place an object O in front of a converging lens and then adjust the lens until when a sharp image of this object O is formed on the screen at a position I, at a position I1. Then after that, we shall measure the distance between the lens and the screen. That is the, between L1 and I1. We shall measure and record that position. After measuring and recording that position, we shall then introduce in the diverging lens. We shall then introduce in the diverging lens and place the diverging lens between the converging lens and the screen. Place it between there. And when we place the diverging lens, the image will no longer be seen. A sharp image will no longer be formed on the screen. So we need to adjust the screen to a new position such that a sharp image of the illuminated object is formed on the screen, on that same screen, but now at a new position, I at a new position I. So we shall shift the screen to a new position such that a sharp image of the object O is formed on the screen at I. Then we shall measure the distance. We shall measure the distance L to I. We shall measure the distance L to I 
and then also the distance L1, L2. After measuring that position, those two distances, L1, L2, and then L1, and then L2, I, we shall then, we shall then calculate the focal length using the lens equation or the lens formula. We shall use the lens formula to calculate the focal length, where uh, our U, remember the focal length is got from the lens equation where the lens equation states that 1 over f is equal to 1 over u plus 1 over v. So if you want to get f, you need u and you need v. But what is the u? The u is going to be the distance O L1. That is the... Oh, sorry, it's not going to be this, but it, uh, the u is going to be... The, we are considering the u for the diverging lens, not for the, not for the converging lens, but for the diverging lens. The u for the, converge, for the diverging lens is going to be the distance L2, I1, L2, I1, and that distance is going to be negative because it's a virtual object. So we need that negative of L2, I1. And how do we get that? We shall get that from L1, I1, minus L1, L2. So we shall subtract L1, I1, minus L1, L2. So that, but that will be negative. Then the V is going to be the distance L2, I1, which you would have recorded. So we shall be substituting for U and V, and then we calculate the F. Let's look at method 2, that is using a concave mirror, using a concave mirror. So here, the setup will be like this. Uh, so we shall place the diverging lens and a concave mirror coaxially. We shall place them coaxially like this. And then what you need to note is that the converging lens, uh, sorry, the concave mirror must be of a known radius of curvature. It must be of a known radius of curvature. Or you must know its focal length, f, such that the r is 2f. So you need to know the radius of curvature of that eh? concave mirror. Then after, you will place the object in front, the object O, in front of the diverging lens. We shall place it in front of the diverging lens. And then we shall adjust the position of this object O until when its image coincides with the object. Until when its image coincides with the object. Until when its image coincides with the object. And at that point, when the image coincides with the object, we are then going to measure the distance O, L, and we shall also measure the distance L, M. We shall then measure the distance O, L, and shall also measure the distance L, M. Then after that, we are going to use still the lens equation or the lens formula, we shall use the lens formula to determine the f. We shall use 1 over f is equal to 1 over u plus 1 over v to determine the f, where the u is going to be the distance o l. The u is going to be the distance o l, and the v is going to be this distance from l up to this point here. From l up to this point here. But from theory, we need to know that at that point, this will be actually the center. That point which I'm talking about will be the center of curvature of this converging mirror or of this concave mirror. It will be the center of curvature of this concave mirror. So the distance from this point I, from that point I, up to this point M, that distance is going to be R. That's going to, going to be, it's going to be R because at that point the rays will be returning back along the same path. So that means that this is going to be the center of curvature of this concave mirror. So we shall measure that distance. Uh, so we shall need that distance 
IL. That distance IL is going to be the V, but how do you get IL? IL is going to be, remember we know the R here, we know the radius of curvature, so we shall just subtract the distance LM, and then we shall obtain that distance IL, the distance IL. So that distance is going to be negative because it is a virtual, it is going to be a virtual image, it is going to be virtual, this distance is virtual, as you can see the rays are not going there, so that's how that distance is going to be the V. So it's going to be negative of R minus LM. And then you shall substitute in the equation, or on the, in this formula, the lens formula, and then you shall calculate for F. Let's look at this example. An object is placed 15 centimeters in front of a diverging lens, placed coaxially with a concave mirror of focal length 13 centimeters. When the concave mirror is 20 centimeters from the lens, the final image coincides with the object. Draw a ray diagram to show how the final image is formed and then determine the focal length of a diverging lens. So this question uh, is an application of the method we have just looked into, that is method two, using a concave mirror. So the ray diagram is going to be just similar to what we have looked into there. That's how the ray diagram is, uh, the ray diagram is going to look like. So uh, we need to get the focal length, so you need the U and the V. But the U, very clearly, is going to be 15, because the object is placed 15 centimeters in front of the diverging lens. So the U is going to be 15, and then the V, the V is going to be the distance from this point to that point, which is going to be the distance from here up to here. And that is the radius of curvature. How do we get the radius of curvature? It is twice the focal length. Remember the focal length was given as 13. So we get 2 times 13, which is 26. So the radius of curvature is 26 centimeters. And they have told us that the lens is, the, conv the concave mirror is 20 centimeters away from the lens, so the distance from here up to here is 20 centimeters, which implies that if I want the distance here, which is the image distance, is going to be 26 minus 20. But remember, it is virtual, so it will be negative. So it will be negative of 6 centimeters. So the U is 15, the V is negative 6 centimeters. So when we substitute in the lens, formula, we shall get our F as negative 10 centimeters. Thank you for your attention. We meet in the next lesson.